Hello everyone, in today's tutorial we'll be creating this heart of stone breaking to reveal a heart of flesh. This effect uses some RBD techniques, particles, as well as vellum constraints to create the beating motion. I'll cover the RBD setup and discuss how I achieved this nice swirl for the gluing particles. Let's get started. Okay, so to begin, I've put this geometry node down. And inside, I've brought in this heart geometry, and I've done a bit of UV edits at the end, so it looks like this. And I just put that out in an FBX for texturing. The next thing we're going to be doing is setting the heart up to go into vellum and setting the constraints up as well. In order to do that, I'm going to start off with a VDB from Polygons. The reason I'm doing this is because this is like a lot of polygons right now and it's a large heart because I want it to behave more accurately when it goes into the vellum solver. If you have a geometry that is too small, it might not translate as correctly as you want it to in the vellum solver. So you should make it a bit bigger, not too big and then it might work better. So I'm going to have to remesh it and make it less polygons for it to work fine. So for the VDB from polygons, I'll just take this down to 0.01 and that's what I have. So it still retains its details. And then I'm going to convert it back to a VDB, back to a polygon rather. And so that's what I have. Next, I'm going to set up my remesh. And that's what I have now. I'll change the target size to 0 0.026. And so that's what I have. So from here to here. I'm going to do a point deform at the end like I've been doing for some time. So it's not... It's not really necessary um, that it looks exactly the same. The next thing I want to do is to set up my attribute paint. In the vellum paper plane project, I showed how you can set up varying uh, stretch stiffness using the attribute paint. And I'm going to be adopting the same principle here. Once you start using Houdini, sometimes you just notice the you're using like similar things to achieve the same thing. So here I'm setting the attribute to stretch stiffness. And so that's how it looks now. And I actually want to paint everything to be red. And then where I want to release this, the stretch stiffness, where I want it to be a bit more uh, shaky, I'm going to press alt, alt, a control rather, not alt. I'm going to press control and I'm just going to paint it there like that. So I want the opacity to be around here. Let me take this down to here and then just paint like that. But I don't want it to be zero, so I want to avoid the purple. Let's paint it like that. The blue is fine. Blue and yellow is kind of where I want it to be. And then for here, I like when this part shakes. It looked a bit more believable. So let's paint it like that. Okay, so that's how I want it to be. So all of this part is going to be more um, stiff and this part is going to be more stretchy and shaky. I think if you're going for a heart, um, it's best to have those parts shaky. I will be showing the reference video that I used um, to understand how I wanted the heart to be. 
Okay, so if you look at this, you can see how the heart is beating. This part are more flesh-like and the rest of it is more stable. There's like a double motion there. And so you see it contracts and then it expands. So that's why I've set up the stretch stiffness that way. After that, I'm going to set down a TED conform. So this tutorial was once again inspired by um, CG Wiki, Matt Estella, and he did his own um, beating heart. I added the RBD and the particle swells after. And I used a different bend to his because I wanted to change how the beating looked. So for this one, just set down a TED conform and then we're going to set a vellum tet tetrahedral as a constraint. Okay. Yep. And so here, I just want to change this to scale by attribute, um, set my stretch stiffness, that's the attribute that's going to be, and I change this to 1. After that, I need to set up some constraints so that it doesn't just fall, and I'll just set... Um, Bellum constraint. Shift enter. And I want to change this to pin. Pin to target. Yep. And for here, I'm going to switch this to soft. This is all to soft, and I want it to match the animation. So it's going to pin every part of the part to itself. And that way it's not going to fall off. Then uh, for the bend, I switch this to 1. And for the stiffness as well, I switch that over to 1. After that, we're going to set a vellum solver. Okay. And before we go in, I'm just going to set the bend. So I'll be copying in the bend I actually used just to show what I did. So this is how it works. And here what we're changing is the squish. So basically you want it to contract, expand, and then come back to original one, one. And then here you want it to just go in slightly. And that's how the beating works. If you want to ensure that it cycles, because this animation cycles through, you can just change the gear here. Come here, go to type properties. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> so come here and go to where is it? All right, we need to go to the animation editor. Yep. And come here. I believe it's channels properties. Yes. And then set this to cycle. So that's what will cause it to loop continuously. And then you just plug that into this one. Within the Vellum Solver, I'll change some things. Um, it will be in the file that I will upload, so don't worry about that. In the Forces, I'm going to add some Velocity Damping. damping, And I'm reducing the gravity by a lot. Because I actually want it to move more. And in the Advanced tab need to go to green collisions and ignore neighbors with same name or piece. believe that is all. So 
let's do a flip book and see how that turns out. Okay, so I forgot to change something before um, I did the caching. And that's this here, the model of the constraint. If I don't change it, then the um, flip book looks a bit weird. Yeah, it's not accurate. It's kind of boiling. So I'm going to redo this and then we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so this is how the flip book looks like. And if you just look here, you can see why I painted attribute stiffness here. While the rest of this is more stable, this is like shaking at the end of the movement. So that looks good. Just going to close that. And the next thing that we need to do is to set the point deform properly. So I'll just place down a point deform. Let's place that here. Next is going to be the mesh to deform, which is this one. And the rest point lattice, which is here. And so that's going to be the original one. And then it's just sort of shaking like that. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And then I'll just cache that and we can move on to the RBD. Okay, so after caching it, I did resize it so it could fit into where I felt the heart would be, which is here. Um, I did a little switch, so I don't want anything to happen until that particular part. So I've transformed it here. And so the heart is stable. And then at this point, it starts beating. So I just uh, retimed that a bit with the switch, just so I have like a bit more variation. So now it's time for the RBD. Okay, so to start with the RBD, I've set up the heart again. And the next thing I want to do is to draw a curve where I want the RBD to break from. On the curve, I want to set the projection, the projection tab. The projection, I want it to be on the geometry. I want to show the guy geometry as well. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to take it from this part. I want it to break more on this part, so I select this and I just draw what I want. So, something like that. Enter. So now I have the path that it's going to open with. The next thing I want to do is a resample. Maximum segments, I want this to be 30. And I want to give it a, a curvy attribute. The maximum segment length. So we should have about 30. Yep, that's right. And next, I want to set a carve. and I want to set it to extract so it's going to keep the point and I'm going to animate this part of the curve view so it's at zero which is a start point right at about frame 36 it's just a number I picked <laughs> and set a key there, go to maybe frame 71, right, and set to like 0.329 keyframe, and finally to 
somewhere around here where I want everything to have opened and I set that to one. Okay, so now if I play through, it should just move. Yep, so it just moves like that. Next, I'm going to do a copy two points. Put this here. And I want to place a sphere down. Set this to a polygon. We look at it, yeah, I want it to be more like squished here. And the uniform scale a lot smaller. Like that. And I believe that's all. If I place it on the copy to points, so we should see it just move across like that. So I'm going to be using this to do a lot of things like. Um, release the constraints and set my RBD to active and some parts to be not being active. So yeah, next I'm going to set a trail node. And for this, I want to extend the trail to a lot. And if I play it now, it just maintains like the part of the trail. So for the null, I'll just set a null here and put that to out curve. And now we can build our RBD fracture. So to do that, I'll just uh, take out an object merge. Merge that in from this heart. That's the static heart that already has the um, UVs, the proper UVs. And now I'm just going to paint density where the line is. So I can just highlight that. Maybe not this, maybe this. Yeah, so that will help me see where the path is meant to go. So this is where I want the the RBD fracture to have the most um, fractures. So for the attributes, I just set that to density. As that's what I used to scatter here. And I'll just paint a line across that. Just paint it like that. Okay. Next, we can do a scatter. And we want not too many points, 500, and we want to use the density attribute. So that's what we get. Don't think I did any other thing here. And then we'll just set it into the RBD material fracture. So this is a heavy node and it takes a lot to, to load. So I'm going to set some of the properties before I connect it because of that. I named this heart fracture. I want only one level of fracturing. Um, and the fracture ID should be heart one. I find it's good practice to just name everything to something you can understand in case you want to set like extra levels of fracture that will break apart at another time. 
which is something you can do. Um, set the scatter points to 20. And I think that's about it. So if we connect this, and you connect this here, extra vernal points. That will give us something. And then we can just put an exploded view. And check how that looks like. Okay, so that doesn't look correct. If we look at the RBD fractor, it's because I forgot to set impute points. Yeah. Okay, so if we look at the exploded view, we can see this part is much more detailed. But the thing with the RBD material fracture is it does give us interior pieces and I do want to have something inside but I don't want it to be this thick because I have the vellum heart inside of it. So go back to the exploded view, I'll just take that back to zero and I'm going to do a blast node. And what I want to blast is the group called inside. If I set the exploded view out, you can see it's still fractured, but it's kept only the outside group. That's because the RBD material fracture creates several groups um, when it fractures. So it creates this group inside and the group outside. And so that's what we get. And now I can set up a pulley extrude. And I just want it to be very little distance, so I put 0 0.002. And now I need to create different groups for what I have done. So I'm going to set an attribute wrangle. It's good practice to always um, reset the groups as you want it. So I'm going to be using if um, I at group underscore outside because that's the only group we have right now is not equal to so that is exclamation equals one so whatever group isn't in the group outside I want that to be in I at group underscore inside is equal to one So now if we look at the geometry spreadsheet, we should have some in the group inside. And remember to change this to primitive so it actually works. <laughs> so now we have some in the group inside. And I have another group here, which is heart one inside, heart one outside. So I'm just going to add that group as well just for naming purposes in case you need it another time at group underscore inside is equal to one so this is the evaluating equals to if it's equal i'm not assigning i'm just evaluating here and then put that up tab i at group underscore heart underscore one inside will be assigned to one if we check the spreadsheet so now whatever is in here is in here as well and if it's not here it's not here as well so we've created our groups properly so this i at group is the function in vex to create a group and whatever is here is your group name so inside or outside so once that's done I can determine what is going to be my RBD. So I'm going to reduce the resolution because it's easier to work with like that. Yeah, I don't want to keep seeing the UVs. So I can do a pulley reduce. 
And for this one, just want to keep 50% of that. So it's much more reduced. And now here's where it gets interesting because we have to do some work to release the constraints gradually as the sphere that we created here travels down. I want the constraints to be released gradually. And after everything is done, then I want the heart to beat and I want that to cause the other constraints to break. So how I'm going to do that, I'm going to use attribute transfer, basically. So let's start off here and make a color. I want to be red. So zero here, zero here will give me red. And I want to set an attribute transfer. What am I going to be transferring? I will use an object merge to bring in my curve. And I want to assign a color to that, which will be blue. So R, G, and B. So that's blue. And then I want to put that into the attribute transfer here. And now everything is blue. And the reason for that is in the distance threshold, you actually want to um, set that properly. So this means that if we look at this, this is where it is. So wherever it's touching it, that's where the um, attribute is being transferred. So for here, I'll just set that to zero. I don't want it to be transferred yet. Then when we get to something like frame 36, I want that to have transferred a little, so 0 0.07, and that's what we get there. When it moves a bit more, say point, let's say to um, frame 86, I want it to start growing a bit after that, but for here I still want it to be 0 0.07, so at frame 96, I want it to have grown a lot more. It's preparing to release. And a frame, let's say like 120, that's like fine. So it just grows like that. And then the constraints are released. I didn't change anything to that, the curve. And then I will just um, set my attribute wrangle here. I'm just checking my attribute transfer is correct. Yep, that's what I want. If it's not, we'll just come back to it and edit it. That's why Houdini is great. So for this one, I'm going to say if at cd.b is greater than zero. So if it's blue, I at active is equal to one. Active is an attribute that RBD uses to determine whatever is active and what's not active. So that will be very useful there. Then I'll set a null here that says low res. Low res. And I'm going to delete the CD because we don't need it. And finally, I'm going to assemble this. So for the assemble, I want to create packed pieces, but I don't want to create a name attribute because I already have the name attribute that I want which is heart fracture and the pieces. And then we can use an RBD configure to test and see which ones are active and which ones are not active. So I want to visualize active. Sometimes it doesn't show like the first time you make it. I'll just save and maybe reset the viewport. Sometimes it's like that. Uh, let's not create any more packed pieces. 
it's probably because in my assemble I did not transfer that the attribute actually I did not transfer the name and I didn't transfer active that's why it probably isn't working okay again <laughs> yes so now it shows and so we can see as it becomes more active how the active travels and everything is active so yep next thing we need to do is to actually release the constraints properly um, in order to do that I'm going to set an unpack all right so we unpack that and we're just going to build the constraints ourselves um, because I'm not using the constraints from here seeing as I've deleted the insides and then I pull the extruded it so I don't want to have extra problems down the line so I'm just going to make it by myself so we can do that with the connect adjacent pieces and we say adjacent pieces from surface points points per area we don't need that many 20 is fine um, max search points we can set that to 25 and max connection set that to 2 and I want the centroid to be bounding box center so those are our constraints not difficult and the next thing we want to do is to set the constraint name and type make sure this is set to primitives otherwise it won't work so it's s for string at constraint underscore name and we will give that glue pretty straightforward and s at constraint underscore type will be equal to all look at the spreadsheet In primitives yep so that's what we have all right so how are we going to release this we use the same method that we used here so I will just copy the color put that here and we'll use an attribute transfer most likely we can use the same attribute transfer that we used here so Let's just copy that. Takes that. So. And release. All right. We can. Promote this to. Points. We can promote this to points, the color. So we want to promote CD. Or rather we can promote it to primitive, not points. And in the attribute wrangle, we can just delete what we don't want. And so that would be if at CD.B is greater than zero, remove prim zero comma at frame num comma one oh right set this to primitives <laughs> okay so yeah it just deletes it as it goes through it and so that's going to release the constraints Finally, let's delete the color because we don't need it anymore. So primitive attributes CD, delete that, and then just set constraints. And just set a null named constraints. Okay. And finally, we are ready to go into the .NET. 
I just need to set somewhere here. This is my high res. That's the one coming from this. And that's my high res because I'm going to be using an uh, RBD transform pieces after. So then we go into our dotnet and then I'm going to put down a bunch of nodes and I'll just like set it up and then I'll go through what I've done. Okay, so I've set up a couple of nodes here, nothing too complex. First, the RBD packed object, which is using the first context geometry. That's this one, the assemble. Next, I've uh, set up the constraint network. So this is taking the second context geometry. That's the constraints here. In order to set that up, you need the glue constraint relationship and the data name should match the constraint name that we set at the top. And you can tell it's there because the guide option says it's red and we have the red lines from before. Okay, so after the constraint network, what we need to set up is the rigid body solver. I haven't changed anything here, it just takes it in. And then here we have the static heart. And here we have the beating heart. That's the one with the con contractions. And so both of them are set as um, collisions here. So both of them are set as collisions. So this is the static heart. And the other one is taking from the other geometry node. And then we just set that here as output. So I'm going to cache this out and then show you how that looks. All right, so this is how it looks. Starts breaking and boom. Okay. In order to see this better, I like to use the dop import points. Okay, so after that, I'm just going to, I just did a cache here. And so for this one, what I like to do is to bring in the dop net, set the object to the RBD packed object, and then select create points to represent objects. I click that I should transfer the attributes there. And so this is the cache that we have. And here I'm just setting a transform pieces to take this geometry, which is the high res, and transfer the motion that we have from the points to it. So this is what we get. Yep. And here I've added a normal node just to fix any issues that it might have had before. I'm just doing a little switch between the two. So between the non-fracture geometry and between the fracture geometry. So that's what we get. Finally, I did a little transform just so it matches the other heart and we're done with the RBD section. Okay, so now we need to create the particles. I'm just going to take this, create a new geometry container which is named sparkles yep and I want to just fetch the geometry so that's what we have next I am going to unpack it And get that. And finally, delete many attributes that we don't need.
and only here I want to keep except the name do we all accept name so we'll still have that there next I'm going to compute the velocity And finally, I'm going to set a debris source. Okay, so for this one, what I want to do is to go here and I want to remove unreleased. So if we play that, then we should get some more um, debris. So we, when we've uh, clicked the remove on release, now remove any points that are not released before the breaking point. So if we play that, then we see we're getting points where it's released. And this is fine, but it's not what I want exactly. So I'm going to be doing um, particle advection with some smoke. In order to do that, I will make a pyro source. Just going to set this to 0 0.03 and to source smoke, which will give me density and temperature. Next, I'm going to add my velocity with an attribute adjust vector and so we'll set the um, noise here Now we want it to be zero centered and a little bit more amplitude set to two. We need to animate the noise and that's about it. Mm, we can change the element size here. Yeah. So next we're going to be rasterizing the volume with a volume rasterize attribute. In the attributes we want to rasterize the density, temperature, and the velocity. The voxel size is also 0 0.03 here. Right. Within the coverage, I'm going to delete the density from here, normalized by clamped coverage, and the attribute I want to do that for is the V. So this is what we have. I'll add a null here. And then we'll just add a dot network. So setting this up as not too many nodes, we need a pyro solver sparse. We need a smoke object. We need a volume source. For the volume source, I don't want to activate it after it's past frame 120. 
So as long as it's under 120, it will be active. Then in here, I want to initialize, uh, I think it's source smoke. Yep, that's correct. I want to change this to first context geometry. So that's this one. Oh. This should be smoke object sparse. Because I was erroring out. Okay. Then for the volume source, enlarge fields to contain sources. And um for the temperature i just want i actually think this was fine i think i set the temperature to pool and not add and i wanted the acceleration strength to be 50. so and for the velocity I don't think I did anything to that. So I'll just do a cache of this. Okay, so I'm going to change a couple of, of settings in the solver. First of all, I'm reducing the time scale. So it slows down a bit. I'm changing this to single project. The cooling rate to 0.9. And I don't want any form of buoyancy, so that's set to zero. Then for the shape, I want it to dissipate. So one means we'll, we'll make all the smoke disappear immediately. For disturbance, I want to increase that by a lot so that the particles can be a bit swirly. And the turbulence taking that to 0.25. Then down here, just going to switch this control field and set it like that and switch that there. I think point, I think two is fine. And I'm going to do some changes in disturbance here. Let's reduce this and change the control here to speed between 0 and 10. Okay, and in the turbulence, increase the swirl size, and this influence range should be like this. Okay, I believe that's all. So I'm going to cache this now. I don't think I made any other changes here. Oh, I did in resizing, actually. Or in advection. In advection and in resizing. I changed the padding here to one. And in field advection, I switch this to this and clamp. And I think that's all. So I'll catch this and then we can see what that gives us. Okay, so this is what we have. There's nothing, then the debris comes and that's what we get. All right. So we go up, I can just um, cache this out and then we can move on to the pop net. So I'll just do that. Okay, so I just brought the dop import field and I input my fields. I did a pyro post process and a file cache. So that's what we have now. Now we can move on to the final pop net. For this, I set a debris source, it's the same debris source, but I changed some things a bit. If I duplicate this, 
first of all, I changed the lifespan to, I believe, like 0.5. And then I just wanted to switch the density scale a bit in this one. So the density scale right now is like 1000. So if I up that to like 5000, what it means is when the particles are released, it releases a lot more pa particles than we expect. So if we actually want this to be zero, we can just take this down and that will be less points. So if we go somewhere to like 100 and one i can set this to do this and at frame 100 it can be back to 5000 so a lot of particles and then none basically and i believe that is the most i changed after that i just did an attribute delete to set to delete the CD and the name because I don't need them anymore. And then I set an attribute remap because I want to remap the age of the particles. So right now if I go to like frame 80 and I set the visualization to the age this is what I get. But I want to reduce the particles that I'm getting or cut off all these really long threads of particles. So I can set this to a 0.5 for the age and I can just reduce here what I get. But the only way to really see this is if I actually remove the points. So I'll set an attribute wrangle and I'll say if at age is less than 0.2 or you can create a channel for it if you want remove point 0 at pt num so that's how we get that so here I can reduce it however much I want or release it however much I want. Okay, so for this, I believe I settled on something like very close to 0.7, something around here. And so what we have is like this. See? So that reduces the points that we have. If I just look at it from here, this is all we have. And from here, this is how it looks. Okay. So after that, I did a little transform um, to match the heart size that I've set properly now. And I do the same thing for the smoke as well here. So I can just take this transform actually. Delete that. So it's to the correct size. And then I can set the pop net. The pop net is pretty simple. So I'm just going to copy that and then walk through what I did. So in the pop net, this is the setup that I use for the debris. I've just set up the beating heart to be the collision and the pop source what I've chained here is the pop effect by volume which I'm using the smoke field that I have here so that's what's plugged in here the advection type is update velocity and the velo velocity scale is 0.8 I also added a pop drag and this is, I'll just do like a cache and then we can see what we get. Okay, so this is what we get at the end of the cache.
just swirling particles. Yeah, so that's what we wanted. Finally, we're going to do something outside this, which will be an attribute blur. So I just want to look at it this way. Turn off the visualization for the age. And turn this off. The influence type will be proximity. And what this does is it just blurs the position a bit more so it's more it looks more finely tuned like stringy as opposed to this yeah so that's what we want and then uh, finally we'll add a variations of color I'm going to copy that node and because the color is already set up the way I want it to be so All right, and finally, I'm just going to delete more of the particles that I don't need. And to do that, another attribute wrangle. So for this one, we'll set if at age is greater than channel threshold. We want to remove point zero comma at PT num. And the threshold is set to about this. So what this does is just to keep the points directly at the, the, the point of uh, breakage as opposed to all of these points, just keeps those, and then everything just goes down. Yeah, so that's what we want. And then finally, I'll do a cache, um, and that's basically how to set the sparkles. And that's it for today. I've included the file for this project, um, in the description of this video and let me know what you think in the comments and what else you would like to see a tutorial about Thanks for watching